Hello and welcome to my overview and guides to the new Aztecs settlement. This video is based on two playthroughs of the game of the settlement on the beta server, uh, and also some general thoughts on how I think you should play, how to complete it within the time, and just some general tips and tricks. Uh, I did originally plan to do this video like I did the minigame guide, which is linked in the description, uh, but unfortunately I don't really have the time to edit and make a proper video like that, so instead of not making a video at all, I will make a live commentary video where I go through some points, because I do feel like I have some stuff to say on the settlement after playing it two times, and some ideas on how I would approach the settlement. Uh, but yeah, so these are the things I will go through. I will go through some general information on the settlement, uh, then how you should start the settlement, uh, some ideas on how to end it, and some general stuff between. Uh, though I will say that uh, for the stuff in between the start and the end, it will heavily depend from settlement to settlement. So what I'll do is I'll talk some general stuff, uh, how many expansions to get, uh, some stuff about the buildings, technologies and so on. But uh, for the sp specific details on how to play, you really have to play it yourself to get a feel for the settlement uh, and how you can complete it within time with your activity level and so on. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's first talk uh, quickly about the rewards. Uh, so if I just quickly go in here, uh, the main reward is the Sun Temple. Uh, it's a 4 by 3 building and it has up to or it has 9 level, giving up to 30 defense for attacking army, 10 forge points and 40 random goods. Uh, in my opinion, this is a very good building. Of course, the main rewards from the settlements are often very overpowered because they are unique, you can only get one. But out of the settlement rewards, this is probably my second favorite only behind the uh, Yggdrasil from the Vikings, due to its size. But the 30 defense for attacking army is very nice, and of course 10 forge points for a 4x3 building is very, very nice as well. Uh, in terms of the time reward uh, is the Jade uh, Statue. It's a 2x2 two two building, and in my opinion it's one of the best looking buildings in the game. I really like the look, and I'm looking forward to having a few of these in my city. As you can see, it has five levels, uh, unlike the ancient obelisk, for example, from the Egypt settlement, which only had three. This one has five, uh, and at max level, it gives five goods, three forge points, and ten guild goods, goods for your guild. Uh, so that's very nice. Three forge points is very nice. It's worth noting that early on, it actually gave five forge points. Uh, but you know decided that that was a little bit too much, so they nerfed it to three forge points, which is still very very nice uh, Finally, let's just quickly also look at the milestone rewards uh, You get 25 forge points after 20 quests and then perhaps uh, what I really like is that after 15 quests You get five fragments of a wishing well now in my main city, these will go right to the antiques dealer, so that's nothing crazy. But for my diamond farms, and for people with diamond farms that they actively play on, for example if you combine wishing wells with uh, GE, with guild expedition for example, to get diamonds, uh, playing this element is a very nice way to get additional wish wishing wells. Uh, you get five fragments for each settlement, so you only need to complete three settlements to get one additional wishing well. And later on, you will probably be able to complete the settlement in around, I don't know, seven to ten days. So that's close to or one wishing well per month, perhaps even a little bit, little bit more. So that's definitely a nice additional in, uh, source of wishing wells if you have diamond farms that you do play on actively. Of course, if you just have a passive diamond farm, you probably don't have time for this, but it's, it's worth keeping in mind. So yeah, uh, speaking of uh, reward and the time rewards, let's quickly look at uh, the time requirements for uh, gold, uh, silver and bronze or whatever. But yeah, for gold, the main one, you need uh, 18 days for the first settlement. That is the second longest 
only behind the Egypt one with 28 days, I believe. Uh, though I do find that for Egypt I often completed it in around half the time, so... In actual time, I feel like this is quite close to the Egypt one, for example. Uh, I usually, on my first two playthroughs, I was able to cut off quite a few days, uh, around uh, five, six days on the first one. I was able to complete it in around uh, two thirds of the time for gold. Uh, I completed it uh, in that time using mainly one hour productions for my cocoa bean producing buildings, which is the resource you need to run your goods buildings. That's the cocoa beans, uh, which you produce in the production buildings. So that's the same as for the Viking and Japanese buildings uh, settlements. But yeah, with running one hour productions, I was able to complete it very comfortably within the allotted time for gold. Uh, so I do think that even if you run four or eight hour productions of your cocoa bean buildings, like I'm doing right now, I do think you should be able to comfortably beat the settlement within the uh, time for gold. Uh, so yeah, starting off with uh, 18 days and then it goes all the way down to 9 days. So I do believe that towards the end you should be able to complete the settlement within around one week. Perhaps even a little bit quicker. Um, so yeah, I definitely think you should be able to achieve gold relatively easily, at least if you play actively or semi-actively. Now another major thing about... Uh, or. And the major new thing with the settlement is the new minigame, the Courtyard Market. I have a, a separate video where I go through everything you need to know about the minigame. Uh, I simply quickly go over the rules, how it works, and then some strategies on how to get the maximum amount of goods. And then also quite extensively go through quite a lot of patterns that help you uh, speed up solving the minigame also give you a better idea of how how it works so if you're interested definitely give that a go uh, i also have made a simple practice website just a simple website where you can play the minigame directly in your browser and you can start a new game you can select how many gifts how many attempts uh, in game you always have one more attempt than the number of gifts so you can practice playing and see how yeah, how well you do without spending any in-game attempts. And here you see, uh, these give anywhere from 9 up to 9 uh, to 10, 12 goods. And as you can see, 0 is to 12, so you do actually have to find all the 12 goods in order to get them. Uh, yeah, I guess I can just quickly play one. I won't go into any thoughts uh, about how I solved this. Uh, but it's definitely... I'll just do this quickly. Uh, yeah, I'm not really too bothered about it. I'm not really using the strategy, sir, but yeah, you get the idea. So, 6 out of 12 goods. Uh, the reason I wanted to show this is that here, when you have when you are done playing the minigame, you have a few options. You can buy some more uh, turns. I would definitely not buy more turns. They are not worth it. But what you can do is that you can boost the outcome, which will double uh, the amount for... Uh, five diamonds per good. Uh, now the reason I mentioned this is uh, in a little bit I will uh, go over some thoughts on expansions and for expansions this can actually be very helpful early on if you do have some diamond farms or you do have, a, have some diamonds to spend spending a few extra early on to get uh, enough uh, goods for some late game expansions early on might be worth it so just quickly wanted to show that but I don't need it for this settlement. So I got six, I got half the headdresses, and with the strategy I go over here, in this video, I'm able to get around 75% of the goods, which I think is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, that's the minigame. Go have a look at this video if you want to learn more about the minigame. And you're able to play better than I just did. <laughs> so yeah, uh, with that, let's quickly go over my preferred starting strategy. Uh, I have a quick video, which I thought I had opened, but I didn't. Okay, so here we go. So my uh, suggested starting strategy, and when I say mine, it's not actually mine. 
uh, this guy on the forum, Civ Army, I guess, uh, suggested it. And there it is. So, the suggested, my suggested starting strategy is a variation of that where we get three vegetable buildings early on. Uh, and you need seven huts in order to do that. And uh, up to five rows. You actually only need two rows, but I got five. You don't want to go more than five. And the reason why I suggest this is that your first goal in this game, in this settlement, is to unlock the minigame. And to unlock the minigame, you need to uh, complete or you need to research the first two technologies. You need to get the shrines and you need to get the aviary. And to do that, you need 15 goods for the uh, shrine and another 30 goods for the aviary. So 45 goods in total. So your first goal in the settlement is to gather 45 goods to unlock both of these. And with those, you're able to complete the first six quests, which will give you the courtyard market. And the reason why you want the courtyard market is that in the market, you can get all the different goods. So with if you're lucky, you're able to uh, unlock expansions, the stone exp expansions or the maze expansions, for example, very early on like you did in the Japanese settlement, where you could unlock late game uh, expansions for late game goods early on in the settlement. It's exactly the same here, so that's something you really want, uh, want to do. But uh, more on expansions a little bit later. Back to this, so this is my suggested starting strategy. Uh, so what you do is you get three vegetable buildings, uh, vegetable gardens. Uh, after one hour, when they are done constructing, you put them all on four hour productions, uh, and then you collect them. And your, what you really want here is to get two 4x boosts. And in this example, I only got one. Uh, so I was able to pick up 5, 10, plus 20, 30 goods in total. And you want 45, so if you get two boosts, you get exactly 45 goods. But yeah, after five hours, when you collect your first collections, you have a few different options depending on what you get. So if you get two four x boosts, you get 45 goods, and you are able to unlock both of the technologies you need for the minigame immediately. So in five hours, you're able to unlock the minigame. Uh, if you only get one, like I did, uh, you can either decide to continue producing, uh, you would need another four to 12 hours, or you could spend 75 diamonds like I did in the video. Uh, but if you continue producing, what you want to do is that you want to delete uh, these two uh, goods buildings. Uh, you want to unlock the shrines for the first technology, which you uh, only, which you do get uh, anyway. Uh, no, no matter how many boosts you get, you will on, always be able to unlock the shrines. So after five hours, unlock the shrines, uh, replace two of these goods buildings with shrines, and with the remaining 1,000 cocoa beans, you put the last remaining uh, vegetable garden on another four hour production. Uh, in this example, I, ooh, okay, what happened there? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, in this example, uh, I spent 75 diamonds to get the, uh, to get the aviary as well, to unlock the minigame. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to do that, you can, uh, simply get some additional shrines and continue producing goods in the goods building and you would need another 4 to 12 hours to get uh, enough goods to unlock the aviary to get the minigame. If you don't get any boosts at all, uh, you should do exactly the same, uh, delete two of the goods buildings, replace those uh, with shrines and if you do want to get the minigame immediately, you can uh, get the aviary by the remaining goods for 150 diamonds. Uh, totally up to you if that's worth it or not. Uh, but yeah. Uh, if you do not buy any diamonds, you need another. Uh, an if you do not buy any goods, you need another 8 to 24 hours uh, to get enough goods to unlock the minigame. So, in the end, you do need up to a little bit over one day uh, to unlock the minigame. So yeah, unlocking it early on is definitely nice. Uh, if, if you do want to go crazy, you could spend two, 225 diamonds immediately when you start to, unlock, uh, to buy all the goods you need for the first two technologies. 
and yeah, and unlock them in game immediately. I would probably not recommend that. But if you do have the diamonds, if you have nothing better to spend them on, I don't know, it might be, might be worth it for you. Anyways, let's uh, go over to expansions. Uh, so here we have all the expansion costs. Uh, as you can see, the two cheapest ones are 10 and 15 goods. 10 and 15. So yeah, my basic suggestion is to get 8 expansions, always buying for either 15 or 10 goods. Now what ideally what you want is that you want to pick up uh, as many stone, figures, maze, perhaps even headdresses from the minigame early on and buy the cheaper expansions. And that's where if you have some if you have diamonds to spare, you might consider uh, boosting your uh, goods production from the minigame very early on in order to get these expansions. Uh, so that's yeah, something up to you to consider. That's the only time I would boost uh, goods. Later on, it's not worth boosting because uh, if you want to buy the goods, they will cost exactly the same if you buy them when you unlock the technology. So, boost for technology for expansions if you want. Uh, so yeah, my basic tip is to get as many of the cheap expansions as possible. However, I would not uh, wait if you are able to unlock, for example, this. I would not wait uh, in order to unlock this, because you do do pay 5 extra goods, but if you would have to wait a day to unlock this, for example, those 5 goods are definitely worth having one additional expansion for one day, in my opinion. So, basic uh, tip is to get as many cheap ones as possible, but do not wait if you're able to get some cheap ones. Uh, yeah. And in general, you should get the cheap ones first, if possible. Uh, however, there are some cases, for example, if you have 10 headdresses and 15 vegetables, and you are on expansion 2, I would first buy the vegetable expansion, the more expensive one, for 15 diamonds, uh, goods, and then buy the next one for 10 headdresses. Instead of getting the cheap one first, and then, oh, not having any goods remaining for the vegetables. So, if you have 15 vegetables, 10 headdresses, get the vegetable one first and then the headdresses one. And same time, same down here. Get the headdress first and then maze, or get the maze first and then stone, and so on. So yeah, I would end up with uh, 8 expansions in total, trying to get as many of these expansions as possible. But it's not imperative. Uh, each expansion uh, has one impediment, as you can see here. Uh, but we do get five impediment removals from the technologies, which is quite a lot actually. Uh, if you only get eight expansions, that means that you will you're only left with three uh, uh, impediments uh, at the end when you have uh, removed all these uh, impediments. Uh, so if I just quickly go back here. And let's see if I find a good frame. Yeah, here you can see my starting setup. Uh, so what I look for when deciding where to build the uh, expansions is to find areas where impediments are on the edge so that I have as much big of an open area as possible. And uh, this one, not, not a great settlement to be honest, but uh, what I decided, I decided to go for this ring here of expansions. These six here. Uh, this one is on the edge, so it's very easy to work around. These two are kind of on the edge, a little bit annoying that I point out, but uh, it's fine. And these two, not great at all, but uh, you do get two impediment removals quite early on, so my plan was to get these two expansions and remove these two impediments early on, and then deal with these uh, impediments up here. There's one thing, quick quick thing I want to mention about uh, impediments, and that is, uh, in many cases you have, for example, this. Here we have a 4x4 four four, uh, expansion, with an impediment on the inside, if you get what I mean. And this is actually quite a surprisingly easy uh, thing to work around in this settlement, because you do have uh, both the vegetable garden, which is a 4x3, and later on, uh, this building here, which is also 4x3, they fit very nicely into areas like this, where we have a 4x4 uh, expansion with an impediment on the inside like that. 
So I have one road here, and then this fit, fits very snugly in here. So in many cases, in this case, and I think in both of my last previous settlements, at least in the previous settlement, I had a similar situation. Uh, so that's very nice. I was able to deal with that very nicely, so I didn't have to remove this. I could use my removals on other more annoying impediments later on uh, in other places instead of here. So that's something to, to keep in mind. This is quite a decent, uh, decent situation. But yeah, talking about that, let's move over to the buildings. Here you see all the different, how many there are of the different buildings. Uh, you start off the settlement with the hut, uh, with the vegetable garden, with the sculpture and the road. And here you can see that the road, it does cost uh, cocoa beans. Uh, so similar to the Egypt settlement, so you do have to take care of that. Uh, you can't really remove uh, roads temporarily for diplomacy, so it's definitely unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, I, ca I kind of like it actually. I feel like it, it makes it a little bit more challenging, a little bit more fun. You have to really think about how to get the diplomacy. So I, I quite like it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's the starting buildings, so let's go over the other buildings, and I've, I'll do this one by one as you unlock them. Uh, and in this settlement, uh, I would recommend that in most cases you unlock a building immediately when you can. In the Egypt settlement, for example, I would often wait until I could unlock two or three technologies after each other before unlocking them. But in this one, there are only ten technologies. And for the most part, uh, with only two exceptions really, uh, I would unlock them immediately when you can, when you do have enough goods. So, uh, the first two, I already kind of talked about those, that's the shrine, the first uh, cocoa bean producing building. And it's worth noting that this has a one hour production timer, unlike in previous settlements where they had one minute. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, you do have to think about when to remove and build these, as they do have a one hour production time. Then you have the goods building, and then you have the level 2 uh, residence or population building. Uh, the residence, I would get this as soon as possible, and I would replace all the huts, or most of the huts. You will always have a few huts remaining in places where you can't get the residences. But I would get as many residences as possible. And then the next building is the maze building, maze farm. Uh, which is quite big, it's 3x5, uh, and again I would unlock this as soon as possible. Uh, at this point uh, you're probably, uh, you're probably do, you will probably need some maize, but even if you don't need a lot of maize, you will probably still have some uh, maize expansions to buy, uh, so I d would definitely get this quite soon. Uh, the next one um, is the first one where we can skip, where you could save up for both of these and get both the statues and the, I don't know, Texcotzingo, I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. But I you could skip it, or uh, yeah, I would I usually skip it and go for both of these at the same time. Uh, there is one point though, uh, this uh, the quest where we have to build these two actually gives one of the impediment removals. I'll go over those later on. Uh, so. You might want to buy get this anyway, but uh, but yeah. Uh, the next one, the Texcotzingo, is the tier two uh, production building. Uh, you should definitely get this as soon as possible. It has a decent boost from the shrines, uh, and it's very yeah, very nice, quite easy to use. And again, four by three, so as I mentioned earlier, fits very nicely into situations like this. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely worth getting as soon as possible. Uh, when I was doing my settlements, I usually had uh, three of these, and sometimes four. So between three and four of these uh, on one hour production, and that was enough to sustain uh, around four or five goods buildings. Uh, if you run four hour productions in these, you probably need probably need four or five of them to sustain have enough for your grids buildings, but with one hour cocoa bean productions, three of these should probably be enough, three or four. Uh, the next one is the stone carver. Uh, here in my first settlement, at this point, I actually didn't need any more stone. I was, was able to pick up all the stone fr uh, I needed from the uh, minigame. 
So in my first settlement I actually skipped that and went directly for the palace, but if you do need to produce stone, get this as soon as you have all the goods for it. Uh, the next building is the tier 3 uh, population building, the palace. Uh, I do see some people in the beta forum uh, saying that they skipped this. Uh, I personally didn't skip this and I would probably get this. Uh, it has some decent boost f uh, in population, uh, the uh, population per tile. So I would definitely get, I would probably get this. Uh, you do get some more room to play with in order to produce the final, the last remaining goods. So more room to get goods buildings and the uh, production buildings. So I would go for this, but you can definitely skip it. And then the sunstone is a decoration. This one you can also skip if you want. Uh, although you might actually have to unlock it early on, or unlock it when when you can in order to get enough diplomacy for the final building, the Great Temple, which is another great building, uh, produces a lot of cocoa beans, uh, however, for me personally, I have actually never used this. I get it, and then I delete it immediately. And that brings us nicely onto the quests, and the final quest will have will explain why I don't use this. But yeah, let's quickly go over the quests. I do believe they are in... Nope. Uh, just a quick side point. Why do they have two Wikipedia pages on the fandom page on each settlement? I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, so here we have the quests, and most of these, they are self-completing, like in most settlements. You don't have to worry about them. So after the sixth quest, quest which, is get, uh, which is have one of the aviaries, you will unlock a minigame. But yeah, all of these are very simple. Here you get the first impediment removal after two, having two shrines, quest number five. The next impediment removal is after quest eight. I have two residences. And then here you see, have four statues is the next impediment removal. So you might want to unlock these uh, to get this impediment removal. That's something you have to consider. And then, yeah, again here, diplomacy. This diplomacy is what you need to unlock the maze farm. Uh, this diplomacy is what you need to unlock this. This diplomacy to unlock this, and so on. So most of these are self-completing as you compl as you do these, uh, as you get these buildings. And it's worth noting that here, two stone carvers, two maze farms, and these are quite big buildings, two palaces. So you do actually need quite a big space to complete these quests. So. Sure, they are quite relatively easy, but you do have to you, have to, you do need to have the room to build them, and that might be a little bit difficult. In some settlements, I would I have to I would I needed to I didn't need those, but I needed to remove other buildings, other goods buildings, in order to complete the quest. So that's definitely a small downside, but it's not too big of a deal. And then yeah, this diplomacy is what you need for the sunstone. If you need the impediment removal, you might want to get that anyway before you can unlock the sunstone. But yeah, that's a, of course up to you. So have one sunstone, have one great temple. And then there's the last quest, which is gather 3000 cocoa beans and 20 of each good. And that's actually very uh, relatively easy compared to the Egyptian settlement, um, at least the cocoa bean requirements. Uh, 3,000 cocoa beans is not a lot, and in both of my previous settlements I was able to prepare for this quest, and uh, actually you only need two, four hour uh, 8 hour productions in this building. The 8 hour production produces uh, 1,700 uh, cocoa beans, so two of those in this building, in the Texco Chingo, is actually enough to complete the quest. So in both of my previous uh, settlements, I was able to prepare that. Uh, I think in both, I needed some final goods overnight, so I put them on eight hour overnight. And then I was able to uh, pick up the goods, uh, unlock the sun, uh, the great temple, place that, complete the last, second to last quest. And then after I got the uh, quest 20, I gathered all the cocoa beans that I had been producing overnight. So. This is actually very simple. Uh, so in both of my previous settlements, I completed that immediately, and then I got two of each goods building. Uh, I deleted all my uh, all my co production buildings, cocoa bean production buildings, and I got two of each uh, goods building. 
and then you could uh, either decide to put both uh, all of those uh, goods buildings on eight hour productions and you will complete the settlement in eight hours from that point or if you wanna if you want to and if you if you're on you could put them all on four hour productions and if you are very lucky and get a 4x boost in each a category you will be able to complete it in four hours but either way it's not that big of a difference and also for the final quest, like you can with the uh, Japanese settlement, is that if you have some goods in the minigame that you don't need for the final quest, you can save those for, uh, uh, if you don't need them to unlock the final, uh, the great temple, you can save them to and do them for the final quest instead. So yeah, I see that I've been going on for 30 minutes already, that's a lot longer than expected, but I'll just quickly give my final thoughts. Uh, this settlement, I really like it, uh, it's not my favorite, my favorite is still the Egyptian settlement, and after I have completed this 13 times, which is what you need, I will probably go straight back to the Egyptians, uh, because I do prefer the time reward. Uh, from the Egyptian settlement, and I do prefer the playstyle of the Egyptian settlement, so that's definitely what I will do after this settlement. But overall, this is probably my second favorite settlement. I really like the mini game. I really like the look, uh, and I feel like it's uh, quite relatively relaxed, uh, a little bit more relaxed than the Japanese, and a lot more relaxed than the Vikings, which is a pain to do. Also, quickly, I forgot to mention it earlier on. Uh, you have. Uh, Four new emissaries, uh, two goods, uh, one unit, uh, some supplies, and a forge point. And you unlock two new emissary slots, so you will probably choose, I would guess, one forge point and one additional unit would be my, what I will do personally. Uh, so yeah, overall, I quite like the settlement. Uh, it's a... <laughs> I, yeah, I was definitely looking forward to playing this on live uh, over the time of recording. There are still a few more days, but I'm definitely looking forward to do, to playing it, seeing how well I'm able to do it. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> don't really have too much more to say, so hope this was helpful. I know it's very long, but hopefully the timestamps helped you to skip ahead and... Hopefully this gave you some helpful insight into the settlement, how it works and some general tips on how I completed it. Uh, if you, quickly, if you want to see my first two playthroughs, I do actually have a full playthrough of the settlement two times. Uh, so I have a playlist here, a lot of videos, some of them quite long, so perhaps a little bit boring, but they, they do have timestamps. Uh, so these orange, if you look at the thumbnails, these, these orange numbers, those are, that's my first settlement, where I did spend some time early on. And then my second settlement, the blue uh, timestamps, uh, I didn't spend any diamonds at all. So here I have my first two playthroughs, and spoiler alert, both of them went very well. I finished in around two thirds of the time uh, for gold, so I'm definitely happy with that. So if you want, this will be link linked in the description, this will be linked, this will be linked, and I'll just put a few links in the description. So. Thank you very much for watching, I hope this was helpful, probably won't upload too much for the rest of this year, 2020, uh, but for next year I'll probably go back to making a few videos, we'll see, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the future.